Hi, this is Ryan with Better Tattooing and I'm asking you a question today. Are you doing that right? <laughs> All right. All right, now that that's over with, are you doing that right? I think that should be like a new thing. And we'll just do this if, if, uh, if it settles well. People are like, that was good. I want you to do more of that. Cool. Or just send me in stuff. Be like, hey, is this right? I'd be like, no, probably, but I mean, maybe I'll say it's right. I don't know. <clears throat> maybe we'll go live and do some of that. I don't know. We'll see. I don't understand this whole social media stuff, but I'm just, somebody told me to do this, so I'm doing it. I don't know. I'm getting old. Anyways, are you doing that right? So I had, and it's not too hard to, to see this stuff. If I mean, you're always sitting there trying to help you know, people improve little minutia inside of their practice. But I, I get this a lot with people, I might as well actually make a G, hey? Um, where they're filling and, and they're doing this and they're doing it wrong. So are you filling right? More often than not, this is number one, right? Because everyone, everyone does this and I, we all know like if you've been tattooing for a while or if you had an apprenticeship from like you know one of these old guys where this, this there's like this big break of information that occurred for you know many generations once the tv shows came out which everyone complains about i think it's great because i'm glad we have so many people in tattoo it now um i get to do this you know for fun which i never thought i would do either anyways um there used to be like a kind of a, a thing that we would make sure everyone did. And you could kind of tell right off the hop if they knew what they were doing or not, because you just have them fill in a tattoo. <laughs> and if they didn't do one hand motion correctly, you're just like, oh my God, dude. So here's an insider trick, which I mean, this is like some, this is serious, like 101. This is, if you didn't learn this, I'm sorry. But here you go, we'll help you out. Um, you're supposed to chase direction when you fill. Uh, and this, this comes down to, <laughs> right, boop, circles, or otherwise. Now, you don't do circles when you fill in a tattoo. You just don't. It kind of looks like you're doing circles, but you don't do circles. Everyone's like, well, I seen the dude and his hand was doing this. And so it looked like he was filling a circle in when he was doing a tattoo, therefore I'll copy it, which is not right. When we do circles, if you actually blow this up and you look at a circle pattern as it's being put onto the skin, what you have is various inconsistencies and in using the size shape patterning as it's moving around a contoured, you know, non-specific flat thing with the machine that is variability and all these other things. This is microscopic, right? What we have is these spots where we create additional trauma points, right? So we'll have spaces where we're gonna have, you know, X saturation and these double spots they pop up is more. And then spots where we have triple ups and not, we're getting inconsistencies, right? So what happens is when you look at it from far away, you're technically just blowing out that area and creating pockets of oversaturation that end up drifting into spots of trauma that end up like filling it in so it looks solid. And it, it can, at times, look really good, especially like the first few years that you have a tattoo. Oh, I forgot about using red, sorry. Um, as, as it heals, though, and settles, pockets of pigment that have been oversaturated, they tend to migrate away from that space. If we have our skin model here, and I have a video about it, I think, as well. I'll just touch over it real quick. As, the, as it comes in, we've created a pocket of trauma. The skin as it ages thins, right? And as it ages, whichever space that this trauma is in that that pigment is being encapsulated in, as it comes in, it gets Oreo cookied. It ends up taking the path of least resistance. Now we have a whole bunch of pockets of trauma near each other linearly in the skin. That pigment is gonna wanna go, especially if there's nothing there, occupy that space. So it's going to increase the amount of movement that we get, given how much is there. I mean, if we have only so much pigment sitting in the space, it's not going to drift, given how much pressure is given into it, it's gonna stay static, which is why some tattoos don't age very quickly, because somebody did saturation correctly. Anyways, so what we're seeing is when people are doing these, these loops, is they're oversaturating the area, right? 
even if they're gapped out in space, you're still getting a spot where you cross over where it doesn't work. So realistically, what you actually do, instead of circles, is you're doing a forward motion, right? It's literally just like a flick shade, <laughs> or you're just pushing straight out, right? When your hand's coming back around, your needle is actually picking up off of the skin and coming back into that initial rest point where you have just past where your line had started and starting to come back in. And we're doing that over and over, right? Until we have a space that we know has been filled in enough that we are like, okay, cool. This strip is done. Now what we're gonna do is come back over on top and we're gonna start the same thing again, overlapping two thirds of the space. And then we'll come back and we can do it the same way. Now when we're chasing our direction, this is really important with our two third overlap because normally what you'll do is you'll go this way and then you'll come back and you'll go in this pattern, right? And when you're doing this to fill, you're kind of pushing the pigment as you go along. But if you use the same hand motion as you're going one way versus the other, you start actually leaving pigment behind. So what happens is, is you're doing your two third overlap. You'll end up getting chopped. So you're gonna have a line that has really good saturation. It's gonna have some gapping that comes over. And as you go back to fill in the other way, what you're doing is by having your, your machine still flicking the same way, you're coming up this way and pulling back. You're literally leaving the pigment behind you. If you were to go one way, which pretend that this is dotted on one side, I'm literally continually pushing that pigment one way. If I come back up and I switch so that this stuff is going the opposite way, what I'm doing is, is my hand comes back around, I'm re-picking up that pigment that's there and I'm moving it to my new spot that I'm flicking off. And then I'm literally like coming back down, picking it, flicking it, right? It's a pick and flick. So you do that this way, right? Where your groups are gonna be picking up, moving that way. This way is this way. And then you're gonna switch your hand as you go back around. So each time that you move through your fill line, however big it's gonna be, I'm picking and moving one way, right? And as I come up around the other way, I'm literally swapping directions and doing my fill. As this moves up, I'm doing the opposite. And what this does is it'll keep the pigment in a tight aggregated space. You're not gonna lose as much. It'll also decrease the amount of exudate that you're picking up when you're doing the tattoo because you don't have to keep going back to pull it in. Right? This will keep the pigment truer, cleaner for longer, although not indefinitely because you are gonna be picking up blood plasma and dead skin inside of that stuff and making it real nasty as you move. But on average, you're using like a 7, 9, 11, 13 mag and you're doing just straight lines like this, you know, in your fill. It's gonna be more efficient as you do this. So, I don't think many people do this right. I don't know why, but I think it's because it all started with tight circles. But I'll see people do the same thing back and forth, and what happens is they end up getting patches where you have a solid block, and then something that's kind of all choppy, and then you have another solid block, and something that's all choppy, and it looks like lines are filled in with your stuff. That's why. Don't do that. Stop doing tight circles. I mean, you can if you want to, but I mean, this is way more efficient. If you're having trouble doing it, it's probably because your machine's going up too high. Like you don't tattoo like this. You just don't. <laughs> just like you don't tattoo like this pulling backwards. Like you just don't. Go forward, use it. The machine is designed to replicate this, right? Or this. Let it do its work. Like you don't see somebody with like a freaking chop saw going fucking sideways and backwards to like cut stuff. And you use the machine to dig through. Let it do the work, don't fight it. That's it for today. Number one of, are you doing that right? Probably not, is chase your direction, even if you're doing circles, but hopefully otherwise. Let us know if this is good for you, comment, all that stuff. Buy a hat, the one with the cat, uh, the sweater is cool too. Uh, otherwise, we'll just see you next time. Thanks, this is Ryan for Better Tattooing, signing off.